The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the April 9th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. I'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. If you got a question but you can't call in, we've got you covered. You can always send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside the Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network, I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We start our day with a sea of red. All the sectors inside the S&P 500 are trading downside with the exceptions being the utilities up eight pennies and the Russell and the uh, real estate sector, XLRE is up 15 cents. Otherwise, everything is trading to the downside. Dow's off 244, S&P 25, NASDAQ 55, Russell's off five, semi's off eight, trend is down 53. You've got gold trading up 14 bucks, silver's up 16 pennies, lights recruit is off 88 cents, natural gas up four pennies, trying to take out resistance, 30 year treasury up 25 ticks, printed out at 117.29. Now, our leader in the clubhouse to the upside is Restoration Hardware, up $9 and change, about 3% move. Moderna's up $9 or 8% plus. Thermo Fisher, nine bucks, 1.5%. Insulate Corporation, seven bucks, 4%. And Palo Alto Networks is up 2.5%. That's a $6 move. MicroStrategies lead the charge to the downside up. 112 points, 7.5%. Super Micro, 36 points, 4%. Destiny Technology, 100. Not having a good day. Down 36%. Decker's Outdoor is off 3% or 32 bucks. NVIDIA down 30. NVIDIA is in bar. Now it's going to form a bar. It's going to form a TD9 count bottom between today and uh, tomorrow out there. It's down 30 buckaroonies out there. So let's go figure out what all that means by taking a look. Instead, let's just go look at what our nine panel chart is telling us. We didn't get, I didn't get a chance to get to that. It wasn't able to get logged in to do the 11 a.m. update. So let's go ahead and do that out here. If we take a look at the ES Mini, it gives us the picture of what's transpired so far today. Nothing more than just a test of support. Test of support is that new profile that you and I were looking at yesterday. That did take place. It did shift the bottom. What I can't remember whether it was the uh, the white background charts, the black background charts, but we're in sync right now. So the key level of support to be watching here is at 52.19. 52.20 says 52.19.90. If price holds that level, all that we're seeing take place is just a consolidation in between its profile levels. Granted, it does have a roach momentum indicator top, and a close below the bottom of its profile, that and especially too close below the bottom of its profile, that 52.19 level would suggest at least a daily change in trend. And that's a possibility, but it's not here as we speak at 11.10 in the morning. If we look at the NQ, the NQ is completing a TD9 count bottom. That's right. It has it confirmed that pattern yesterday. Uh, the bar after bar number nine is what's in place right now. And so we've got a TD9 count bottom. Now, what price has done today is done nothing more than pull back the test profile support. That's where the buyers are located, 18163. I have no idea whether these buyers can fend off the sellers or not. It would be easier if the spot follow tunics, which is the one 
panel in the center uh, was not above its 50-day exponential moving average, but it is. And so it says caution is definitely advised out there. If we take a look at the U.S. dollar index, it is also consolidating with inside its daily profile between about 103.85 and 104.34. Goldilocks. 2372.50. That's the number to be paying attention to. Why? Because yesterday, gold completed a TD nine count top. A close above 2372.50, which I think is a likely outcome, will negate that signal and suggest that gold moves higher. However, we got to respect until it does, it's got a TD nine count top. In the case of uh, silver, I believe today is bar number eight of a TD nine count top, says that this could complete that pattern by uh, Thursday of this week. It also has an A to B equals CD pattern. The A to B equals CD pattern suggests that this should target 2926 as its next stop. Why? Because that move off of that C point, which was only a 40% retracement, first it's stronger, it's on the left-hand side, and it was a shallow retracement, so odds favor a move higher. However, a bearish reversal candle would say, hey, we've got a short-term timeout, so you want to watch for that. In the case of light sweep crude, light sweep crude has a TD nine count top. It would be negated with a close above 87.63. What it's doing, much like the ES Mini, much like the NQ, much like many things, trading in between support and resistance, support of its daily profile, and that's in the zone of 84.09 to 84.80, resistance being 87.63. And natural gas, it's trying. It's trying to do everything that it can. But what it really needs to do, and right now it's trading above the top of its daily profile, we've got a roach momentum indicator bottom. In order to really prove itself to us, we need to see a close, two closes above the top of the profile. So the first level of resistance is going to be 1.879. If we get a close above that, it has promise for a rally, a rally that I would think would last into the mid-July or June time frame out there. But that's a different side of the picture. We don't need that side right now. What I've identified is that uh, bear shooting star candle uh, that's uh, got resistance at 1.906. So if natural gas is really going to rally, we need to see a close above 1.906. If we get that, then we're going to see a further move higher out there. And finally, if we take a look at the 30-year Treasury, it yesterday got down to that one-to-one -one price projection with a little doji candle. So any close higher today is going to generate a bullish engulfing candle. And that's going to be a by the D point pattern. Now, resistance inside of the 30 year treasury is up at 118.22 to 119.14. The reason that I gave you those values there is because it was a bullish structured profile. We closed below a bullish structured profile for more than two consecutive sessions, then it really is the center of that profile where counter trend moves would run out of steam. That says any close above 119.14 should send price up to the top of its daily profile 120.20. That's not what it's dealing with today. What it's dealing with today, it's going to likely going to generate a bottom pattern, and that should take price up into the 118.22 to 119.14 level. So that covers the, the general overview of the markets. Let's try to get a little bit more specific here. To do that, let's switch over. It's only Tuesday, but let's go take a look at the daily equity future, daily and weekly equity future contracts together out here because they provide us with some important information, perhaps. So we know inside the ES Mini daily time frame, we know price is testing the support level. We've already taken care of that. What concerns me, if you will, the most would be the weekly time frame chart. And what I mean by that, it's only Tuesday, so it's not much of a concern just yet. However, what we can see is prices beginning to lose its momentum. Since we've come off of the October 26th low, and really this is a weekly time frame chart, so it was really the week that ended November 10th out there, we have seen price stay above its green oscillator and change line. That tells about strong bullish momentum. Well, if we close below it this week, that would be signaling to you and I if price moved back to the 5095 level. It's only Tuesday, but this is uh, something to be paying attention to. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. 
While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. I flipped the uh, charts over to the 120-minute time frame charts for the equity futures. The reason I've done that is because these are the charts that are really providing us with the best information. So let me give you a, a run through of these. If we take a look at the ES mini start here, we can see that it's TD9 count top, which formed on Friday. So this formed at uh, 2 p.m. on Friday out here. Uh, that has really acted as a key level of resistance. So the key area to be watching here for upside movement would be a close above 52.72.50. We can see that as we came into the 10 o'clock hour out here, price was testing that level. It was also testing the top of its profile. That's also at 52.72.50. That is a very key level out here. Even if this profile goes away, 52.72.50 is your key line of demarcation for the ES mini. That's the price to most certainly be selling from, and that's also the price where price closed above it says we had higher. Now, price had pulled back as we take a look at in the inter, uh, the daily time frame. Price was pulling back, testing the bottom of that daily profile. You like to see some type of bottom signal on an intraday chart uh, to, to let us know if that support level is likely to hold or not. Well, just on the 120-minute chart, we're not going to base all those decisions on a two-hour chart out here. But when we do take a look at the two-hour chart, price pushed back and tested the bottom of its daily profile where it found support. Now, I would say that 51.9550 is another key area of support, but certainly 52.10 is as well so that's really our trading range that it seems like we are stuck in at this moment in time 5210 to 5272 if we take a look at the nq it also at two o'clock in the afternoon last friday formed a td9 count top now it did that um, as price was testing the bottom of that current profile which remains in effect right now but still the key level to be watching that td9 count top 
on a two-hour basis is up at 1840825. On uh, the pullback out here, all that we've seen, uh, which is important because this candle here is going to close at uh, 12 noon. So in about 40 minutes out there, price closed below that oscillator and change on at 18293. That would be the first time that we've seen that since last Friday afternoon, and that could be telling us to move back to 1805150 or maybe worse. The last chart for the 120-minute time frame that we're going to pay attention to is going to be the Dow, the YM. Also at 2 p.m., forming a TD nine count top last Friday. Now, the pullback that we saw inside the Dow so far has been nothing more than a test of its breakout level of support for the two hour time frame. So, 38,886 is the key number to be watching there. The reason we're not paying attention to the Russell 2000 because I don't have any valid top or bottom for this two hour time frame. I do, I see, I do see a bottom that is out there, but we're not going to really pay attention to that. I'd be paying attention to the ES, the NQ, and the uh, Dow, uh, at least for its two hour time frame, for some uh, good signal information out there. So I hope that that helps you out. Let's do this here. Let's get into some of the requests that have come in. Uh, just a few, so I'd love to hear from you as well. So don't hold off. Uh, you can always send me an email, Steve, at tfnet.com. Inside that subject, can please put radio show question. So the first request that came in was from Mohammed. Now, this is from yesterday. It came in late, so please get those requests in early. Um, you know, we, we can't control what our Internet service providers and how they send information and when they get them. So the earlier you send them, the easier it might be for me to receive that. But it's AMD that Mohammed is interested in. Mohammed, I apologize. I don't recall what the question was. I just wrote down to make sure I looked at AMD this morning. But let me give you the run through of what may be taking place here. First, there's a B point that we want to be paying attention to, which is the trading day of March 25th. The volume on that was 71 million shares. The reason we're paying attention to it is because that level was passed on April the fourth with 88 million shares so 88 took out a swing point with 71 that says that this has a confirmed a to b equals cd pattern to the downside uh, so it, it topped by the way with the roads momentum indicator top now it appears now it has turned into an a to b equals cd to the downside let's do the price projection measurement using that uh, tool out there and that says that we get down before its breakout level support maybe in the 133 and change level out there whoops but what I want to make sure that we take a look at is support is also exist at 140.15. So not until a new profile forms out there will any other level of support uh, be something that I take a look at, 140.15 being that number. So you got an A to B equals CD to the downside on the daily time frame. Let's look at the weekly. The weekly shows that price is trading with inside its bullish structured profile. So the daily says pay attention to 140 and below 140. The weekly says... Don't have to worry about that. You've got to plow through 159.33 first. So the buy zone on a weekly time frame is between 159.33 and 164.45. So, Mohammed, you've got to really put together the weekly information along with the daily information. Yes, there's a confirmed A to B equals C to the downside, but we can't ignore other patterns or other levels of support that are present on the charts. For example, on the monthly time frame, the only level of support that I have is at 150. So, again, price would have to take out that 159.33 level. So, let's make the call like this. AMD is suggesting that it wants lower price. That lower price may find support between 159.33 and 164.45. If it doesn't, that tells us that price is likely headed to 150 and change. And below that, 140.15 would be the move to the downside. So that's what I see when I take a look at AMD. Mohammed, thanks for waiting a day on that one. And I hope that provided you with the information you were looking for. Ray in Sarasota has a request for two instruments. The first one being HR. TX. So let's pull that up on our screen. And uh, HRTX, as we can see right now, is consolidating with inside its daily profile. So the support level is down between 258 and 269. It is a slightly bullish structured profile. And resistance out here, Ray, is at 286. I believe that's what you were looking for was support and resistance out there. Um, what else do I see on these charts? On the daily time frame, not much. On the weekly time frame, a ton. The ton is a TD9 count top. Now, that confirmed or completed uh, three weeks ago. And so far, all that has led to, and it was really last week, was a test of two levels of support. The first level being the top of the profile, 264. The second level being the oscillator and change line. And that was, uh, I don't know what the price was. It was less than 264. But nonetheless, as we speak right now in a weekly time frame, uh, Heron Therapeutics is in a neutral mode. Yes, it has a TD9 count top.
but also price tested and rejected support. And therefore, the weekly goes to neutral. But prices above the profile level, price above a greenhouse and change line, that says it wants to rally further. If it's going to rally further, the key level that price needs to get through on the daily time frame is going to be $2.86. If you get two consecutive closes above that, that says a further rally. The monthly time frame shows that price is trading with inside its profile. Its resistance level out here on a monthly time frame is 294. So 294, even if we can even if we can get above 286, really it needs to be 294, Ray, that you want to continue to see Heron Therapeutics trade above to suggest that it wants to get back to its highs out there. So I hope that helps you out. You also want to take a look at Pan American Silver, PAAS out there. So let's take a look at its charts and see what it's communicating. Today is going to become bar number nine of a TD9 count. So Ray, what that tells us is that we could or should see a top between today and tomorrow, at least a daily time frame is suggesting that now its price target to the downside would be the oscillator and change line the oscillator and change line at the moment is printing out at 1657 the weekly chart is trying to take out a td9 count breakdown resistance level 1864 if price closes below this level at friday on friday out there likely the td9 count top is taking place and that would then suggest to move back towards that 1657 area so Ray, i hope that helps you out with regard to p -A -S. we come back to this break we're going to go out to martinez california and speak with brent about bfc we'll be right back. the gold report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com.
Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. Still all U.S. indices trading the downside. We're going to take a look at VF Corp with Brent in Martinez, California. Hey, Brent, thanks for calling and thanks for holding. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing great, Stephen. How are you? Excellent. Thanks so much for asking. So VF Corp, uh, what are you doing here and how can I best help you? I guess the one question I really wanted to pose to you is uh, I don't have a position. I've been watching this like I typically do. I just... Uh, we have that low that was put in back in November at 1285. Yes. And then I was just looking at the chart on the weekly. I definitely see it. I, I, it's a little hard to see on my daily chart, but uh, it was coming into that area. Now, it didn't hit the bottom, but it got into that candle with higher volume. So I wasn't sure how you approach that or what your thoughts are on the fact that it was doing that. I know it didn't hit the bottom, but how would you, uh, you know, approach it? Sure. So great question. And here's how I would approach it. I first went back to the daily time frame. I didn't know what question you were going to ask, but I could see that it was moving lower. And um, the daily time frame, Brent, actually has a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. And for that, I start with the swing point high on uh, December the 14th. The swing point low that I'm using is from February 7th. That made a rally, about a three-day rally, nice rally into a high on February 12th. So the B point of that A to B equals CD pattern, again, from February 7th, did volume of 29 million shares. It was passed with 80 million shares. And that was on the trading day of uh, February the 3rd, uh, 8 million shares. Oh, I thought it was 80. Hold on. 10 million. Oh, maybe Stevie misread something. 8 million. I did. Okay. Uh, that poses a different question now. Okay, so I, I sorry about that. My, uh, my I, I stayed up too late to watch that uh, basketball game. <laughs> so uh, that was easier. So so you've still got an A to B equals CD pattern, although I would say it's not confirmed with volume to the downside. But we are trading below that swing point. We're also trading below a new profile that is forming today. And as long as price remains below, I would say, 1404, the bottom of that profile, 1304 out there, this is telling us that it wants lower price out there. Um, on a weekly time frame, price is below profile support and closed below its red oscillator and change line last week and remains below it this week. That tells me that price should go target that 1285 level. So the 1285 weekly swing point had volume of 38 million shares. As Brenton was saying last week, it closed inside that with 105 million shares. Ordinarily, when you move into a swing point with volume, it increases the odds. It's not a guarantee, but it certainly increases the odds that price would go target the low of that swing point. So I would say, and we're below the uh, uh, bullish structured monthly profile, and we're below last month's low, everything to me is pointing at lower price out there. And so I think that means uh, you'll be able to reevaluate what you want to do with this instrument as price gets down to 1285. But so far, everything that I'm looking at is suggesting that that's what it wants to uh, do, is, uh, is price to head lower. Now, if price were able to get back above 1404, that the uh, center of its bullish structured profile, then I would say at least we would get a rally up to the 1485 level. No idea whether it could take that out. It's not the condition we're dealing with right now, but it is one that has some potential out there. You could see a rally today. Um, not that I necessarily see any signals of that uh, at the moment, but that's so that's what I see, Brett. Now, did that answer your question or did that pose another question? No, that's my thinking. I, I'm going to, you know, again, just be patient and See if it's to, in my mind, it should go down and test that level. I would yeah. think it would, and if it doesn't, <clears throat> that's okay. And I'm looking at your charts. I mean, even to the monthly, I haven't really gone back on something even further back. I don't know if this is like as low as it's ever been. I need to go back and look on something you know that goes back even further, like you know a five to a ten year chart. Sure. See if there's so, something back even further. But yeah, I mean, looking at what you have here, that's pretty much the low that it's ever had. So. 
Yeah, so actually it goes back to, uh, it looks like this was an IPO that it came about in April of 2009. It was May of 2009 when it actually hit its all-time low, if you will, Brent, and that's at 1249. So I've got 1249, and what are we taking a look at uh, here? We're just talking about... Uh, so twelve eighty five. Twelve eighty five. So it could get so that twelve forty nine is is still out there as a possibility. But you know, you'll have that piece of information assuming that price tests that twelve eighty five uh level out there, which every Every chart we look at here is indicating that that's a likely outcome. Now, look, it's not going to do that in one fell swoop. It's going to have, you know, it's like it's like any market. It goes down for three or four days and up for a couple of days and then down for three or four days. Uh, but it does look like that's what it's after, is that uh, swing low at 12.85. Okay. Yeah, that was it, Steve. I, I appreciate you taking a look at it for me, and I uh, hope you have a great day. You too. And Brent, I also put, uh, just on the weekly chart, you had mentioned the weekly, I put a little trend line out there uh, that uh, that everybody can see. I would say it requires a close above that trend line to tell us that, okay, the trend has been broken. But that's that's a ways off from now. So, Brent, always good to speak to you, and thanks so much for the call, and I'll look forward to the next call. All right. Take care, Steve. You bet. That was Brent in Martinez, California. Ticker symbol there is VFC. Um, we covered... Uh, Pan American Silver. Our next request uh, comes in from Alan, and Alan is looking for a low risk entry into uh, Merck. MRK is the uh, ticker symbol out there. Now, low risk entry. Uh, I'll do the best that I can. So, when we take a look at uh, Merck, this thing really gapped to the upside back on the trading day of um, March the 27th. I mean, that was a huge, wide ranging bar out there. A gap. To me, is also a wide range of bar. You just fill it in versus where the prior bar's close was at out there. And the volume on that session was 16 million shares. Uh, the day that it closed below the oscillator and change line was 6 million shares back on April 4th. That was suggesting that price wanted to seek out another area of support. And that's what it's done this morning. That level of support is at 125.47. Uh, yesterday, the retracement was back with 6 million shares. Again, that's going into a breakout with 16 million shares. And it has closed that gap. And it's at the top of the profile. So if you really have a hankering to get into Merck, which it sounds like you do, and you're looking for a low-risk entry, now could actually be that point. And then what you would do is you would close it out if you saw a close below 125.47 because it would be telling us, well, maybe it's going to get to 124.20, 122.92, even 123.38. But more importantly, it would tell you that a key level of support did not hold. Now, if that's going to be a potential area for you to consider taking a long trade, and uh, then we would see bottoming signals on intraday time periods. So let's start with the 30-minute time frame chart and see what we have out here. Alan, we have a Rhodes momentum indicator pattern that uh, confirmed at uh, 1030. Uh, so just a few minutes ago, and now price is trading with inside its profile. I would nearly, I would say, a close of 128, I'm sorry, 126.49, two consecutive closes would uh, suggest that this thing wants to rally towards 129. I can't say that. Why? Because we did have two consecutive closes above that, um, and, uh, and that failed. So now price is pulled back. But you at least need to clear the 126.49 level out there. Uh, Steve Rhodes with TFN, and we'll finish taking a look at Merck as soon as we get back from this break. Spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey. You've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made it so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So we take a look at uh, Merck out here. What we know about Merck is that on the uh, daily time frame, price has pulled back and tested the top of its profile, a potential level of support, maybe an area where a bottom could take place. We looked at the 30-minute time frame chart. It showed a bottom pattern, as does the 130-minute time frame chart. It's got a TD9 count. You were looking for a low-risk entry. Well, I would say now is it. Why? Because the price closes below the TD9 count bottom. Uh, which is a uh, 125.88. It has to do it on a 130-minute time frame. The last bar closed at 11.40. This next bar will close at 13.50, uh, 1.50 in the afternoon. If price is trading below that TD9 count bottom, uh, it would also likely be below the bottom of this new profile out there and would suggest to move back to 123.77. But the reason that you would have gotten into the trade will have been gone. And so you would go ahead and exit the trade that way. So that's the best low-risk trade right now that I can find for you in ticker symbol MRK. So I hope that helps you out, Alan, and uh, best of luck to you, whatever decision you make. Peak G inside the Tiger's Den would like to take a look at Bitcoin. Now, I don't know why uh, if it's the April or the May contract. That's the active contract right now, but I've got the April contract up here on our screen. So let's take a look at it first. The continuous contract, we're looking at the futures, uh, shows um, does not show a topping pattern. It's got a Rhodes momentum indicator signal, but that's it. The weekly time frame has also triggered a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. That says that week's end peak, if there were to be a bearish reversal candle, right now it shows a shooting star. No idea whether, what candle formation it will look like on Friday, but if price did generate a bearish reversal candle, that would then tell us that price should pull back to the 65.511 area. What I'm really saying is not necessarily that dollar amount, but to its green oscillator and change line. That's the present value. On a daily time frame for the April contract, what we have have is a Rhodes momentum indicator top that has led to a sideways consolidation. Our price right now is trading with inside the profile. You can see out here, Peak, that the oscillator and change line has acted as resistance out there. And that's currently at 72.109. Support out here is going to be at 66.631, the bottom of that bullish structured weekly profile. On a 30-minute time frame, I don't see any kind of a bottom, uh, nor do I on the 60, although price is testing a key level of support at 69.495. I see a negated two hour TD9 count bottom, or it looks like it will be a two hour TD9 count negated bottom. We won't really know until I think this candle should close at noon. Let me just make sure it does. So if Bitcoin, the April contract that is, is trading below 69,985 at 12 noon, that pattern gets negated and says that price heads lower out there. 
240 minute chart looks at suggesting lower price as is the five hour time frame chart. So the call here is Bitcoin is likely to head lower and 66,631 to 65,498 would be its price target out there. So Peak G, hope that helped you out. You also wanted to take a look at the grayscale Bitcoin ETF out there. So let me close out these charts. You're welcome. And let's go see what GBTC itself is doing. That's gold. That's not what we're looking at. And we'll be here momentarily. I think it's right here. Yeah, it is. Okay. So now we take a look at GBTC. We see a consolidation with inside its daily profile. So the first thing that I can share with you, Peak, is support and resistance. 59.68 is support and resistance up at 64.01. On a daily time frame, we'll pull this back a little bit to the left, expand it out. We can see the Rhodes Mintum indicator top. We can see a Peak G top out there. You got to love that. That was asked by peak G. So you've got that top out here. You've got a uh, sideways-ish type consolidation really is what's in place out here. I don't have any signals on a daily time frame to suggest that that won't continue. On a weekly time frame, we have a completed TD9 count top. Now, what price is doing is it's consolidating with inside its weekly profile. A key level of support is going to be that green oscillator and change line, and that's at the 58.29 level. If price closed below that, that would suggest getting back to 51.46. I would say the bottom of the consolidation is around the 55-ish area out here. Um, so the daily, you're in a bear structured profile. Here's what I would say the charts are telling you and I at 1146. A close below 62.28 should bring 59.68 into play. The monthly chart looks muy bueno. It uh, negated a TD9 count top from way back in July of 2021 out there. I don't see a current top in place. In fact, I see a negated TD9 count top. So bigger picture, looks like GBTC wants to head higher. The weekly, the problem is you got a daily top and a, and a weekly top out there. But so far, levels of support have held. Um, watch, watch that 5829-ish area out there. Close below that is going to be the signal that says that we had uh, even lower out there. So, Pete, I hope that helped you out with regard to GBTC. As always, thanks so much for writing in. Eddie in Palm Beach is asking, will NVIDIA get to 740 to 680? I don't know the answer to that, but let's go take a look at the charts out here. So here's what we know about NVIDIA. Today is going to be a successful TD9 count bottom pattern. I do not see any other kind of pattern out here for nvidia it's pretty much been a straight line to the downside so this td9 count suggests that nvidia eddie should form a bottom between today and tomorrow now don't know whether it will or it won't but the cool thing about that pattern is that you have that in place and so therefore if you get a close below the low of that pattern and it could be the low of today but it could be the low of tomorrow so i don't know the answer right now the low of this pattern is at 8 30 22 but you can't use that until the session ends really tomorrow out there but the daily time frame is suggesting, and we've seen really a sideways consolidation ever since it formed a Rhodes Mintum indicator top back on March 8th, and it's trading into that swing point where you'd say it would be the bottom of the consolidation, May the 11th, I'm sorry, March the 11th, 67 million, 68 million shares traded that day. So far today, inside of NVIDIA, we've got volume of 28 million. So you've got similar but slightly higher I would say, I would say definitely higher volume at this stage as price is testing that swing point. Now, with the TD9 count bottom, if it closes above that swing point, closing above 841.66 with volume, that would then just tell us that tomorrow price would at least or should test that area. But NVIDIA, you're asking, can it get back to 740? Um, well, anything can happen. And you're looking at this gap right here that took place on uh, February the 22nd. Right now, the answer is not likely, at least at this stage of the game. But if the TD9 count bottom gets negated at any point in time in NVIDIA, then I would say the answer to that question is yes. So keep your eyes tuned to today and tomorrow and the next day with regard to price action and those lows in the TD9 count pattern. On a weekly time frame, what do we have out there? I'm going to assume, and that might be a bad assumption, that we have a sell the D point pattern. Let me pull this back. And the answer is yeah, okay. So we already have that in there. So you've got to sell the D point pattern with price consolidating with inside its profile. Now, a weekly close below about 859, 
that's the green asset on change line, would say, okay, maybe I want to get back to test support. That's at 755. You're still asking 740. We don't see 740 coming into fruition just yet. Maybe it spikes down to that level. But still, you want to be paying attention to the daily TD9 count pattern. The daily fails, then we get to the weekly. The weekly says, okay, I want to head back towards that 755 level. The monthly time frame chart, as we speak right now, Eddie, looks bullish. You got an inside bar, but it's early. It's only the 9th of April. Uh, a bearish reversal candle at month's end would confirm a Rogeman to indicator top. So right now, Eddie, Ed, now what I'll be doing here, the question is, will this, is today the bottom? Is today bar number nine? Is that the bottom? You know, the easy way to answer that is see if you got any kind of bottom signals on an intraday chart. I don't see one on a 30. Let's try the 65 real quickly here before we're off to this break. 65, TD9 count is trying to form as well as an a to b equals cd pattern we'll be right back and finish up nvidia for eddie and paul and beach really i think he's in both we'll be right back the gold report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back. So uh, we take a look at NVIDIA out here. This is for Eddie. And uh, Eddie, the only intraday time period that I see a valid bottom for is that 65 minutes. Got a TD9 count bottom that is going to complete here at, or going to confirm. It uh, looks like it'll confirm here at uh, 1245. And then you've got another 65 minutes after that for the pattern to complete out there. If this is the bottom, you would see, and in the case of NVIDIA, you'd see a close of a 22.01 out there. So, But your question was really, will price get back to that um, 740 to 680 level? And right now, the evidence says no. Not until the TD9 count 
bottom pattern that's forming on the daily time frame fails. Dan, the other side, the Tiger said wants to take a look at IONQ. So let's put those charts up on our screen. Sold puts yesterday. We'll sell more if it reaches eight bucks, seven ninety. Uh, might have marked the low by your read yesterday morning. So on a daily time frame, first just the initial signal. So I look at a chart. The first time I'm looking for is there a bottom pattern or a topping pattern out there on a daily time frame? I do not see a topping pattern. Now maybe there's an A to B equals CD, but that would require a bullish reversal candidate to confirm that bottom. So don't have to worry about that. The weekly time frame. I understand why you're short here. The weekly time frame. You're below profile levels. You're below red oscillator and change line. I don't see a bottom. It suggests a move lower. In the case of the monthly time frame, this is telling us, Dan, that price may want to get to 610. So we're trading below last month's low. Uh, 610 is the bottom of that monthly profile out there. If I just pull back um, a daily, no, let's go to the weekly real quickly here. So the weekly has a swing point that has volume. This is the November 3rd of 2023, 49 million shares. When this was passed, that would be this week, uh, so far, you're at 15 million shares. So I don't know what the volume metric will look like. But what I can say, Dan, is if we get a close below 923 with more than 50 million shares, this thing wants to get all the way back to its lows out here, back in the $3-ish type area or something along those lines. So here's A to B. Oh, I didn't grab it right. Son of a gun. Let's see. Let's try A to B. And congratulations to UConn out there. That is one heck of a uh, basketball team. I mean, they... They are strong. One heck of a basketball team. Yeah, that would give you an A to B equal CD down to the $3 type area. Folks, have a uh, terrific Tuesday. I'll look forward to seeing you on wonderful Wednesday, 11 a.m. sharp. Be safe out there and have a great day.